So today's task is going to be cleaning up the garage. Uh, as you can see, there's a kitty ride over there. There's a kitty ride that I'm making and refurbishing there. Some Tomies, sticker machine, just a whole bunch of stuff everywhere. Again, just didn't have time to do anything. Uh, you'll see some of the stickers on my toolbox. I'm a mechanic. It's I don't know. Everybody's got stickers on their toolbox. Uh, some of them might be offensive to some people, but at the same time, I'm not interested in peeling any of them off. There's a massage chair that we removed, uh, the shelving that I installed, batteries, all that kind of stuff. Here's another toolbox I got. If you guys want, I can go through my tools. Um, show you some of the stuff that I have as a mechanic. I don't really do mechanics on the side that much anymore, strictly because I'm too busy with the bending. Here's an air compressor. Modified it with those fans on top to keep it cool because it was running quite a bit before. It turns on and off with my lights. There's a air dryer system. Tsunami by Suburban is amazing. That's that purple one in the middle there rack for all of my parts oil cart love the oil cart really good for doing semis and stuff whole bunch of parts air hose got those lincoln air hoses on the wall those are great oil tank that's where i pour filters and stuff into uh, sawdust for cleaning up oil. At the same time, I got to do this. It's a reinforcement plate for the cart. So I got a custom cart made, and they didn't listen to me when I told them how heavy my toolbox was, um, and they didn't build it out of thick enough metal. And now, without that support block in there, it warps. So I already went through and welded on one on the front which helps the front quite a bit. But the back, even with how, how thick the back is, six inch rolled back, uh, quarter inch steel plate, it still warps. So I gotta go through, grind off all the paint. I spent about a day painting this up. It's fairly thick, it's really nice coat of paint. Just gotta grind that all off, weld that piece on. And then hopefully I can push this back against the wall. It's been a couple, uh, it's probably been about a year that it's been like this now. So remove those shelves. Probably just going to leave those, those brackets up because I have nowhere to put them anyways. And then uh, push the toolbox against the wall and go from there. So I'll just put that bevel on it here for uh, the weld to go into. Here's my die grinder. Only real tool that I got right now. Wait for the compressor to catch up. You can probably hear it. I don't have too much farther to go. It's been about 10 minutes, so we'll keep going when the compressor stops. oversprung and then when I take out this block the weight will come back down on um, on the metal and hopefully bring it straight uh, that's in theory I don't know how well it's gonna work but time will tell so I put on some safety gear too just because, well, I have it and we should. I do want to note that I'm not a welder, so this is not a how-to video, it's a how-I-did-it video. Um, 
I work with welders, definitely not one. So the very first problem is I don't have a grinding disc. Uh, all I have is zip cuts. So what I'll have to do is just use, you're not supposed to use a zip cut to grind. So I'm gonna have to use my buffer wheel. So I just showed you guys uh, a thermal image from one of the tools that I have of the air compressor. So it was below, well it was right around 105 degrees C. Uh, that's after it running straight for 20 minutes. Now you're not supposed to do that with these three stage compressors like that. A twin screw uh, air compressor is good. Um, I was going to buy one of those before I slowed down in the mechanic business. So uh, I still got this. I do plan on putting on three more fans onto this compressor just to keep it cooler. Uh, just because the cooler it runs, the less condensation and so on and so forth in the air. I should note too, you guys obviously don't know how hot that compressor used to get. It used to get, like running continuously like that, to about 160, 170 degrees C. Uh, so, way better. So none of you guys definitely won't be able to tell, but I got both ends level now, and uh, it's definitely sprung in the middle. So, um, that's what we're looking for. So, hopefully, uh, it all works out well. I had a smaller plate, but uh, I don't know where it went. So this will have to do. Unfortunately, it is pretty damn big. But there's nothing else I got, so. I uh, just want to protect the toolbox a little bit. I'm not super worried about it. I'm not one of those people, so it is a toolbox, it's a nice toolbox, but in the end it's just a toolbox. I don't know why, but this side seems a lot harder than the last side that I welded. I was able to get under here no problem, so I don't know what I'm going to do, but this seems like it might be a little bit difficult to get down here for some reason. Uh, I'll do my best. The other side I welded all the way. Definitely not necessary. And I'm not going to do it here. Uh, I might weld the top all the way. Uh, just to keep crap out from going in there. Again, not necessary. We'll see. It depends how I feel.
So as you can see, I only put a little bit of weld on it. I think that's gonna be enough. I don't wanna overdo it because there's no point. Plus I gotta wait till it cools down every time. Like it is cool-ish all the way. I could continue, but I think that's gonna be enough weld for the backside. It's just gotta hold the plate on it. It doesn't need to stop the plate from bending or anything because it won't anyways. So as long as the welds don't crack and the plate stays in place, it'll do its job. So I did end up using my grinder with the zip disc here. Uh, the other way was just taking too long and I wasn't willing to go get another one. So all I did was I was gentle with it and there's nothing wrong with it. It works. It's just not ideal. Is it? With how small this shop is, it's it's a two bay garage technically. Uh, it's 24 by 24. Um, we haven't parked in here since the day we bought it. We did buy this specifically for the garage because I had so much stuff. Um, we are looking at buying a house eventually here with a big shop, but for right now, we want to focus on buying income properties, whether it be. Uh, another rental property or a business or commercial property or something of the sort. Something that brings us money rather than takes money. Um, I'm a firm believer on there's good debt and bad debt. Everything that doesn't make you money in my mind is bad debt. So um, yes, we own a house and people will say, well, that's not bad debt, you own a house. But at the same time, uh, it costs us money, it doesn't make us money. Um, I, I do say it's better than living in a rental because I can do whatever I want and in the end I own it. But for the most part, it's not an asset, it's a liability. So I'm gonna keep trying to puzzle all this stuff in here. Some stuff's probably gonna have to go in the garbage, uh, like this bin, I use it for rags. Uh, normally I wash my rags just because they're not cheap and it's cheap enough just to take it to a laundromat for 20 bucks and wash all 200 of them compared to going and buying five to 10 for 20 bucks. So I wash them. There's a bag of coveralls. I wash those as well. And uh, I'll see where I can put this stuff. So as you can see, I'm all done now. It's not ideal, but uh, with the limited space that I have, it's the best I can get. Let's back up here and I'll show you what we're working with. So when you walk in the door, uh, I have that door covered because I never use it anyways. I can use the wall space. Um, there's a vending machine that I restored, sort of. It just works now, it's not completely restored. Uh, when it's actually full of stuff, you can just push the button and it's free vend. Um, 
There's my O-ring wall, all that stuff. I must say having the toolbox up against the wall has made it a little bit better. There's definitely more room than uh, there used to be. So it's better, it's not ideal. Um, that's, I wanted this ride here uh, available just because whenever it comes back from fiberglass, uh, I will be putting it back together. There's all that. I can show you that ride a little bit just before I leave too. Uh, or at least what I've done to it. So this is all the parts from it torn apart. Here's the uh, cash box coin max setup. This used to be two mechanical ones, but as I said a couple of videos ago, um, we always switch them to Ventex if possible. So this is a, a plate that you use to replace that. Uh, it's got new locks. Here is, here's the inside. Um, I had this powder coated, it's pretty cheap. Here's the floor for it. I uh, polished it, which is pointless because people step on it anyways, but there's a speaker, some more wiring. If you come to this side, here's the bolts and the guts of it. Uh, here's the wiring I did. This is the Vintec wiring. This is just for the coin counter. It uh, Every time a coin goes into it and the ride turns on, it counts the coin. Um, yeah, there's the side of a Vintec. Um, not much to it. So, see how much longer it's going to take, and we'll go from there.